All right, so I did promise that I was gonna do Azure Desert training camp video, but I just ran out of time today to do the proper video, so that will probably be tomorrow or on Sunday. Uh, but the key thing I wanna talk about today is basically like pro rider vlogs and how much you should follow what pros do, and obviously how much you shouldn't. So I wanna talk about mainly like training, nutrition, equipment, and then race choice. I think those are the four things that I can think of where there's obvious pros and cons to each, uh, like pros and amateurs. So I think we'll go to training first. Obviously, you can't copy how many hours they do just because if you work a normal job, you just don't have enough time physically in the day. Or if you do, let's say you did five hours after work, you finished it, work at like five, let's say, got on the turbo or whatever at 5.30, finish at 10.30. That's just not really like sustainable to then wake up for like, let's say you've got to start work at eight or nine. It's just not really sustainable. Uh, and I don't think also it's necessarily the best way to train either because I don't think you need as many hours when you're an amateur just because you don't do as many long races. Therefore, I think training is not always the best to follow them. I think obviously the overriding training principles of like make your hard days hard, make your easy days easy, etc. like polarized um, is a good idea, obviously. Uh, and I also think the other thing that you shouldn't really like, well, it's just not you shouldn't copy, but you just can't, is that pros never have to get up really and ride straight away. Like they'll get up, eat breakfast, do activations, and then ride. And it's like, if you're an amateur, quite often you have to wake up and just ride straight away. So that makes fueling a lot more difficult, which obviously I'm gonna go talk on about nutrition in a bit, because I think that's another key issue. Uh, I'd also say with training, it's just the fact that like, you've got to focus your training maybe more on what's easier mentally than just what's perfect, Psych like physiologically. For instance, pros will always do a three-day training vlog. Obviously, that doesn't make sense if you have a weekend because you don't want to take a rest day on a weekend when you can do lots of riding. And also, like it might make some more sense to do your effort days on a Tuesday and a Thursday instead of a Tuesday and a Saturday if you're gonna have a rest day just before them. Just because if you do it on the Saturday, then you know you might not be able to do a long ride afterwards because you're too tired, and that might be the only day you can do a long ride apart from Sunday. So then, obviously, it makes sense. So I think in that sense, it's obviously like better just to think about your week and how you can plan it better. Uh, but yeah, I'd say training, it's pretty obvious what you should and shouldn't copy. Um, I would say the only thing that maybe you should copy that people don't is to do like activations, for instance. Like they don't take that long, maybe like five or 10 minutes, maybe only on key sessions, but they could make a difference. And I also think core, like how many people have like 10 to 15 minutes a day spare to do core? I think you could do it. And I think this is where maybe like, obviously it's a massive effort. I'm not lying, I'm useless at doing it, but I think it's somewhere where if you look at pros, you're like, oh, they've got all the time in the day. It's like, well, they do, but a core session doesn't take two hours. Like it, it can be 15 minutes and be very effective. So I think that's one thing to do. And also stretching again, you could spend five to 10 minutes stretching just before you go to bed. It's probably gonna make quite a good difference, especially if you wanna ride in an aggressive position or on a time trial bike. And I think that's probably where you can copy pros. Like they do things that you don't wanna do, but you probably do have time for it. I know it's not nice, but I feel like you probably do have time. Uh, then food, I think obviously the main thing is that you don't need to eat as much to them, but that's all the rest of it. I also think following how they do it, like a lot of them will do low carb days and all the rest of it. I think for general life, I don't think that's great just because you're gonna be like bonking in the middle of a meeting or something and just not be feeling in top condition. So I think that's where it's harder. I think it's really hard to be super lean when you're not full time because you obviously you don't have the hours that they do. Um, but also just the fact that you actually have to be like functional during your life while they don't. They can literally just sit on the counter and be a lemon for the rest of the day. Like obviously that's a bit of an example. They do actually have other lives apart from riding a bike, but you know what I mean, like it's a bit harder. I think it, what is interesting is to see how they try and lose weight because um, most of them do just calorie restrict. None of them really do any fad diets. No one does like super, super crazy high carb, low fat like Jeremy Ryder. No one also does super, super low carb, high fat days either. They generally just do calorie deficit, which is interesting to see because obviously like they do rebound a lot in off season. So maybe as an amateur, you don't wanna do that, but it does seem like that is the way they will lose weight. Um, I would also say trying to copy how lean they get probably isn't ideal. Um, I got relatively lean in hill climbs and like I was fine, but my numbers were quite bad, like compared to what they had been. So if I had my best ever numbers and my lightest ever weight, I'd actually be quite good. Like six was heel over 20, but at my lightest weight, I was not doing my best numbers. I was doing okay. Um, like for five minutes, I was doing like 6.7 watts per kilo, but it was probably like, 10 to 15 watts lower than what I could have done if I was like three or four kilos heavier. So I think again, it's sort of like, you need to figure out what you're gonna do, um, what races you wanna do. So if it actually makes sense to be really light or not. And also they obviously have some extra help uh, with the team doctors and all the rest of it to stay lean, but we're not gonna speak too much about that. Uh, and then I'm gonna talk about equipment. I think equipment is what someone where amateurs might have a massive advantage. Um, obviously, does, providing you have some disposable income, like obviously if you have no money, then yeah, you're at a disadvantage. But let's say you have a, 
a medium amount of disposable income, I think you can have a better setup than a lot of pros because you're not limited. Like if you want to get narrow handlebars, you can just buy them. You don't have to think, oh, they don't make integrated bar and stem in that narrowness. You can also always select the fastest tires. Like if you want to on a TT bike, you just run coarser speeds. It doesn't matter if you're not on sponsored by them. You can just do that. So I think in that sense, it's actually quite good. Um, also, like if you're doing, if you're really keen, you're doing error testing with helmets for like TTs, you can just pick the quickest helmet. You can pick the quickest skin suit. So I actually think in equipment wise, obviously some of it is a disadvantage, like in just in terms of pure money, but in terms of like relative wise, I actually don't think it's as much of a disadvantage. Um, and I also think like you can be clever, like you can do a skin suit, um, like a TT skin suit in a road race and have little um, gels at the back of your neck, which some riders do, but like there's certain things that you can do that maybe pros wouldn't do. And I think equipment is not, as Dan Bingham shown, obviously is a, a nice bike, but it's like you can do things that the pros might not necessarily be able to do. And I think it's a big advantage um, in some way, some regards, obviously not everything. Um, it would be nice to have a free bike the whole time, but I think you can get away with um, just being able to smart with your choices that can actually make you go a lot quicker than you think you will. Um, and then last one is race selection. I think this is something that's maybe underplayed, but pros often don't have a, a lot of choice of their races. Like they just get told this is the race you're gonna go to. Unless you're a top dog, like, you know, if they need someone to race, they just need someone to race. So it might not always pe uh, like suit you. They might not always be in peak condition. I remember a lot of people who have been pros, like Phil Vine was like, you just gotta be like 90% for most of the year just to make sure if there is a race, you can do a job. But I think with amateurs, it's it's quite good in some ways is that you can really peak. Like if you are like, you know, I wanna win one time trial, then you can just peak for that time trial and train it 100% for it. But also if you just wanna be like, I just wanna be good all year, you can also do that as well. So I think it's quite, I guess, like good in some ways is the fact that you can really choose exactly how you wanna ride the year, how you wanna train for the year and really like pick on your pick your goals specifically. And I think it can be maybe more rewarding than just being told like, these are the races you're gonna do, this is it, just grow up and you're just gonna ride in the front. Like you can really be like, if I'm a climber, like I'm just not gonna do a flat bunch sprint, which is 120K long, like what is the point? But then you know, if there's a really hilly race, you're like, well, I'm gonna try and peak for that, for example. So I think that again is, is something that is important. I think overall, like looking at their vlogs and stuff, I don't know how useful it is just because it doesn't really apply to you that much, um, a lot of things. I'd say maybe the only thing that I missed with nutrition was that they actually eat a lot on the, on the bike and they're always really hydrated. So I think those are two things you can definitely like take with you um, for sure. But yeah, I think a lot of the stuff they do, um, Campanuts I really like for time trial stuff. I think he's, he has a lot of interesting things that he does that maybe other riders wouldn't do or just that you wouldn't have thought of like all his activations, all of his stretches. Some of them are really weird and his core workouts, but it's sort of interesting to see exactly what he does. And I think it, you know it's more like curiosity of seeing like how pros actually do train, how they do this. But I think again, like I think a lot of the stuff they do, you don't have time for, or you know it's real marginal one percenters. Uh, and I think yeah, sometimes just not really worth it. But anyway, I hope you found this video useful, and um, I'll see you in the next one.